but it's hard being a parent. And the crazy thing is now my three kids are now 13, 15. Alec just turned 18. And for our whole life, we've been sitting there, we've been parenting, we've been coaching, we've been building into them. And now it comes to this point where just in a couple months, there's going to be this transition, this momentous occasion, this pivotal life change where we've been raising him, we've been equipping him to hopefully be on his own, and then I'm going to speak to him basically. I'm going to probably say a couple words. My kids have emphasized, Dad, keep it short. <laughs> I'm prone to lecture. And, uh, and I'm going to say a few words, and then he's off on his own. I'm going to commission him to this next stage of life where, where it's up to him. What would you say? We kind of have a glimpse of a commissioning of sorts. Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, and if you got your Bibles, I encourage you to open them. If you don't have Bibles, there's, a, there's one of those pew Bibles in front of you there. I actually looked, it, it's on page 989 in that Bible right there. Matthew chapter 28, Jesus has been hanging out with his fellas for years now, the disciples. And as he's been hanging out with these guys, he's been building into them. He hasn't just been teaching, hey, let me just tell you these things. No, he hasn't just been teaching. He's been discipling them. He's been living life with them. They actually saw how he reacts to people, how he responds. So this wasn't just his words. This was his actions. And he's been doing this with, for years with these guys. They've been seeing this out of his life. And now it comes to this point where his time is through and he's leaving literally probably ascending to heaven and in some of his last words to his disciples, he commissions them for this new stage of life they're gonna embark on. He commissions them and he says these words in Matthew 28. He says to them, he says, therefore, I'm looking at verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So he says these commissioning words, these famous words, go and make disciples. It's interesting because these are his last words. He didn't just say, oh, go and, you know, every once in a while, talk about God. Go and go to church once a week. No, he says, go and make disciples. Now, the word go there is kind of interesting because, and I'm not some scholar, but it's interesting when you look at the original language here that was written down here. The verb is actually the make disciples. Scholars would call that the imperative, make disciples. The go is actually a participle, and if you might remember from English class, a participle would mean it's kind of like as you are going. So he's not saying go and make disciples. It's not like this thing like, oh, by the way, every once in a while, Go. And when you go, some of us think of like, oh, it's disciple time. Let me go put on my missionary t-shirt and I'll go and I'll serve for a week. And then I'm done. Take off my t-shirt and it's back to normal life. That's not what he was saying. He was saying, as you are going, make disciples. The verb is to make disciples. And literally in this participle, it's kind of like as you're doing your daily routine. Now, some of you might be like, well, Jonathan, why didn't they just say that when they interpret it? Because they didn't want people to underestimate the strength of this word go. This word go was not just kind of like a, hey, um, and by, by the way, if by chance you happen to go, you know, then make disciples. It wasn't that. It wasn't like, and if you ever get around to it, go. It. No, it wasn't that at all. It was today, as you go, because I know you're going to go today. When you do that today, be sure to make disciples. That's probably a better way to interpret it. Today, when you go, because Jesus would actually use this command, go sometimes. There was a time where disciples were going to go. They were going to go on the boat. And he goes, oh, you're going to go? Well, basically he said, go and, and then he gave a command. It was like he's saying, oh, as you go right now, as you're going to do this thing, be sure to. And that's what he's telling us. He's saying, in your daily lives, today, as you go, as you do what you do. So if you're sitting here and you're saying, I I'm a welder. He's saying, as you weld today. As you go to the job site, as you're riding with your coworker in the car, as you go and you're hanging out with the customer today, as you then go home with your family, be sure to make disciples. If you're sitting here saying, I'm a teacher, saying, as you are teaching today, as you're with your kids, as you're hanging out with your coworkers in the teacher's lounge, as you're after school coaching like you do and mentoring, 
And then when you go home, be sure to, as you are teaching, make disciples. If you're a student, as you're a student, as you're playing sports, as you're doing what you're doing today, make disciples. Parents, as you are parenting, as you get up with your kids, as you take them to school, as you pick them up from school, as you're hanging out with them in the afternoon, as you eat with them for dinner, as you go to bed and you put them to bed at night, as you're doing that, be sure and make disciples. As you are parenting, make disciples. That sounds like a lot. Some of you guys might be like, Jonathan, man, that's, that's a lot different. I just thought maybe I could just drop off the kids once a week at church. And here he's saying, as you go about your daily routine, that, that kind of brings a lot more to it, huh? As you are parenting, morning, noon, night, as you get up, as you go to bed. You know, this sounded familiar to the audience there. Might even sound familiar to some of us here. Because see, the audience Jesus was speaking to there, they knew these scriptures pretty well. They especially knew the first five books here. The first five books, which we have in our Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, these first five books are called the Torah. And the, and the Jewish people, a lot of them have it memorized, and especially key passages. And one of the key passages here, as a matter of fact, I'd encourage you to turn to it, is Deuteronomy chapter six. Deuteronomy is the fifth book in the Bible. So if you take that Bible and you flip to the beginning, Genesis, just keep going to the right, to the fifth book, Deuteronomy chapter six. This is one of these passages that they had heard over and over again. And as Jesus is talking to these disciples and saying, hey, as you go about your daily routine, as you get up, as through the day, as you go to bed at night, many of the Jews had heard this before, and here's one of those places they'd heard it. Many of them probably even had it memorized. Deuteronomy chapter six, this is where Moses is talking to the Israelites, and as he's talking to the people, he's saying, hey guys, I don't want you to forget something. And by the way, he speaks specifically to parents here. Now my heart is really to parents. I love helping parents. That's part of what we do. Our ministry, uh, the source for parents, we have a, a website that helps out youth workers, anybody who mentors kids. And then we have a website that helps out parents, thesourceforparents.com. And parents, man, they just always come up to me and they're like, I just, I just don't know what to do. And I tell you, this calling is, man, this is, it's crystal clear right here. And these guys, they knew this because here in Deuteronomy chapter six, Verse four, he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them uh, when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get, them up, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands. That's in the stuff you do. Bind them on your foreheads. That's the stuff you think about. Write them on the door frames of your houses and your gates. Wow, I mean, that's intense. That's not just, hey, bring them to church once a week. Every once in a while, I'll do a little Bible study. He's saying, as you get up, as you go through the day, as you go to bed at night, in the things that you're doing, in the things that you're thinking about, as you are parenting, as you're going through all this different stuff, don't forget to tell them about what I've done for you. Now, a lot of parents might just go, Jonathan, that's, that's a lot. I mean, that's asking a lot. I work. I'm gone. How can I do morning, afternoon? Not, I mean, what's that look like? I mean, how do I actually do that? Some people might be honest and just say, hey, you know what? I can't. I can't. And they're going to leave that void of space. I mean, literally they'll say, There's those hours, I cannot fill all those hours. Don't worry. Our kids will gladly let something else fill those hours. Somebody else will be glad to step in and fill those hours for parents. And the media is stepping up and doing that.